Are you on the hunt for a potential Airbnb property? The process differs from buying a home for traditional reasons. In this video, I will outline five things that will help set yourself up for success and choose the best property to buy for an Airbnb. It would be nice to be able to say that the most profitable kinds of investments are X, or the best locations for Airbnbs in any town are Y. But what makes an Airbnb successful in one place differs significantly from what makes it successful in another. For example, the Reader's Digest wrote an article in 2021 about the most popular Airbnb properties by state. And the only constant about the results was the inconsistency of what worked where. There was everything from a rustic log cabin in Alaska to a geodesic dome in the woods of California. And every kind of dwelling in between, including caves and tents with no electricity. Therefore, when I was writing this video, I decided to go at it from a different perspective. I compiled a list of the five main attributes to consider that will help you choose the best property to buy for Airbnb that suits yourself and your own situation. First off, make sure you have a budget in mind before you start to look at potential Airbnb locations. If intending on using a mortgage to cover the purchase cost, get pre-qualified with a licensed mortgage broker. They will help you look at your finances, consider your goals, and guide you on how much property you can presently afford and not lose everything. If you're on your own when making a spending budget, you have to be realistic about your expenses. You should assess, therefore, how much money you can have to spend now. So let's look at some expenses that come along with Airbnbs to consider. First, there are insurance costs. There's a bit of a gray area regarding whether Airbnbs are considered commercial buildings or not. And sometimes it comes down to how frequently occupied the property is with guests. Therefore, your business may or may not be insured under your homeowner policy. If, of course, you're hosting in your own personal home. <laughs> and a licensed insurance broker will be able to make that determination based on the current status of your business. If you must obtain additional insurance, it can be a significant amount of money, depending on where you live, your building's age, and what amenities it has. One additional note, Airbnb does provide some liability insurance. While talking with your agent, just make sure that the amount given is enough coverage and protection for you to be comfortable welcoming guests into your home. Speaking of gray areas, your Airbnb business can either be taxed on a commercial or residential rate. Which is utilized depends on many things, whether your property is your primary residence, how the property is zoned currently, and many more things. <laughs> Taxes are easy ways for cities and states to make money on these new kinds of hotels. But they can pose problems for you as the host. Specifically, if you don't keep an eye out for how you will be billed or your status and whether it will be changing in the future, you could end up getting a tax bill that's higher than expected. If you're able to or have the means to buy a house of lesser quality with the intention of flipping it before leasing it out, the cost of the renovations and labor must be accounted for and will affect if you can reasonably attain the property without going bankrupt. Any appliance or fixture you install in the unit will need to be maintained, and such activities come with a cost. This includes changing furnace filters, replacing smoke and CO detectors, cleaning HVAC systems, and things like that. If your unit has a pool or a hot tub on site, they also need to be maintained and you may have to pay for chemical treatments and general upkeep of the features. Also, a small budget should be set aside to cover damage caused by guests. As mentioned before, you will get some kind of liability coverage through Airbnb, but it's best to also have a small budget set aside for 
miscellaneous expenditures not covered by the company's given policy. And last, depending on what kind of amenities your Airbnb has, you may have to pay for additional costs associated with the guests staying there. For example, if the unit is equipped with a washer and dryer, you will need to purchase laundry detergent and softener. Also, you'll have to buy extra toilet paper and paper towels. Other things that can contribute to the cost of running an Airbnb include energy costs, like heating and cooling, internet Wi-Fi, and food and beverages for your property. Keeping all of these expenses in mind when you make a budget for buying an Airbnb will help you better understand how much money you'll need to make the project profitable. So let's recap. First, allow your budget to guide you on what property to buy when looking for potential Airbnbs. Get pre-qualified if using a mortgage. This will give you a realistic idea of what you can afford currently. A significant component of this includes allotting for business expenses. We discussed some of those costs and they were insurance costs, property taxes, reno and repairs, maintenance costs, and money for practical things like laundry detergent and on-property internet. As a real estate investor, it used to take me three months of research to find a property worth investing in. Then I found Mashvisor, a platform that helps investors make confident decisions within minutes. Start your free trial at Mashvisor.com. You should always research any regulations regarding short-term rentals in your area before buying a property. Here are some helpful questions to ask. Number one. As mentioned, is the property zoned for commercial use? Make sure you know how the zoning district regulates the property before buying it. And check with your local municipality if you have questions. Number two, are there regulations regarding home occupations for your area? Number three, how about utilizing shared kitchens? For example, renting out kitchen space shared by other guests. Is this something that's allowed in your town or city? If not, then consider finding a property where each guest can utilize their own kitchen space. Number four, are there regulations regarding how close you can be to another short-term rental property in the area? There might be distance requirements that you're going to have to deal with. Number five, consider general building or zoning regulations. Maybe there are specific rules that prohibit visitors from being allowed to stay overnight, or even how many cars one can park in a driveway, or can guests park in the street overnight? Calling your local representatives can help guide you to the answer to all of these questions. And should you stumble on an unworkable restriction, you will know that you therefore have to consider moving your search to a different area entirely. Prime real estate is expensive, but it can make or break your hopes of turning a profit in your short-term rental. We all remember how important it was to choose the right location for our first apartment, and the same applies to renting out your home through Airbnb. Even though you likely won't be living in it, it's wise to place an investment strategy now to better guarantee your hopes of turning a profit on your short-term rental in the future. In every town and city, there are areas where you can find tourist attractions, things like museums and parks. Airbnb hosts should invest in properties in these areas because lots of potential guests could choose to reserve their stay specifically with your property because of its proximity to the things that they want to see. Public transport is critical for out-of-town guests without transportation. If your Airbnb property is located too far from a bus stop or a trolley or a subway, then visitors might not want to book their stay with you due to the added expense and trouble of having to attain a rental car or Ubering to their desired locations in the city. Many guests are looking for comfortable short distance travel experiences that can be planned on a whim. So they choose places within close proximity to convenience stores. This allows them to purposefully pack lightly with the intention of purchasing what they need when they arrive. Also, we've all been on a trip and forgotten something silly, like deodorant or a toothbrush or something. 
and being within a reasonable proximity to a store could mean they will go there instead of calling on you to help fulfill their needs. Also, while you likely will provide guests with the basics, maybe coffee for their coffee pot or even a box of donuts if you're feeling generous, if a guest doesn't have a car, they, they will need to figure out something in order to feed themselves. And therefore, being near restaurants makes your guests' experiences all the better. You should pay attention to other properties that are around yours. If they're too close or the neighbors are too loud, it may negatively impact your guests' experiences. Also, neighbors are notorious for feuding with short-term rentals. And sometimes I understand, so I'm not being judgmental. <laughs> but you can bet any negativity your guests encounter will come up in their review of your Airbnb later on. Let's recap for part two. We talked about buying where allowed and considering local laws and regulations so you could do business as a short-term rental legally. We talked about choosing tourist-friendly areas, being within close proximity to public transportation, nearby stores and restaurants, and choosing properties away from neighbors if possible. I grew up in the suburbs, but I'm from a city where there's a single central high school. So I became friends with a lot of different kinds of kids, and I spent a lot of time in many different neighborhoods and areas of the city. And now I know the good neighborhoods from the not so good ones very well. And I watch YouTube videos of tourists vlogging their experience in my hometown, and they are unknowingly staying in Airbnbs in the most dangerous parts of the city. And there was one specifically I remember where I saw this lady walking at night to go get donuts and she reviewed them in the parking lot at night in a not good area. And it upset me because their host should have warned them that the area is not ideal. Just something like, you could, the house is safe, we're all safe, but just don't go wandering the streets at night by yourself to get donuts. <laughs> Tourists don't have the perspective of what's safe and what isn't when first visiting an area. And as a host, you need to ensure your Airbnb is first in a safe location, or you need to be an advocate and lay down some ground rules for your guests to follow, just so they're safe while they're in your care. And yes, the donuts are delicious, but get them in the morning when it's safe, like a normal person. <laughs> Don't just assume that you can establish yourself as a beloved Airbnb host quickly and automatically in your community. Research how many other properties are listed in your area and look for holes in the market to guide your Airbnb business because you can fill that void. Are all the properties in your area large family homes and there aren't a lot of centrally located lofts for overnight business guests? If so, you should cater to them. Add a business suite as an extra that can be rented out as needed for those kinds of guests. Or even just give them free office supplies or printer paper or something. They'll appreciate it. Further, if you want to host young couples, for instance, maybe look at cool condos downtown near the bars or the nightclubs and provide comfortable living space for just two people. I have a friend who did just that. She owns a, a couple of condos and she decorated them as love-themed. She put up hearts everywhere and... She installed a cuddle pad so they could snuggle on it. She texted it to me. I, I'm all for a good business venture, so. <laughs> I mean, I made fun of her, but I was proud. She knows that. <laughs> Couples with children may be interested in properties next to family attractions or near restaurants that can serve both them and their children together. Maybe choose locations across from a play park or a public baseball diamond. You can decorate for the kids and advertise that you have the basics, like a pack and play and baby monitors and height chairs, those kinds of things. In short, do what you can to fill the hole in your market and guests will find you. 
so let's recap our final section. When choosing a property, ensure you buy a building in a decent or better section of town. If that's not possible, try to be transparent and guide guests where they should and should not go. Additionally, make sure to study your market to identify underserved guests. Building your Airbnb brand to cater to those in want is a surefire way to be successful in this business. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. We post videos on real estate and real estate investing every Monday and Thursday. Also, to learn more about Mashvisor and how we help beginning investors make smart investment decisions, check out the site by clicking on the links in the description.